So today's video is geared towards people who spend the majority of their time in urban environments, highly domesticated environments where you have all of the amenities that we've come to enjoy in our civilization at your disposal. And maybe you don't frequent the wilderness too much. This video is mostly for you, but it's also maybe something that people who've spent a lot of time in the wilderness can relate to as well. Now, as some people know, I've done a lot of work in silviculture. I worked for seven years tree planting across the Canadian boreal forest. And throughout that time, I probably put in about 14 months sleeping in a tent out in the wilderness in conditions which were very harsh. As romanticized as uh, the tree planting industry might be, it's probably one of the hardest jobs you can do. Like I say, I probably slept under the stars more than a lot of avid outdoorsmen. And I'm not saying that to brag, it's just a reality of the job. We don't have the luxury of staying in Atco trailers and having hot showers every night. Sometimes we do. In the later years, they brought in some of that technology that allowed us to do that. But for the most part, you were roughing it in the bush. I've flown in helicopters into the most isolated cut blocks you could imagine in the middle of frickin' nowhere, and you're left to your own devices. If something happens to you, if you get injured, if you encounter some aggressive wildlife, which had happened many times to me, you're on your own and you have to deal with it somehow. One of the things that I've learned over the years with regards to immersing myself in a wilderness environment where there's a downgrade to my standard of living in the sense that, you know, you don't have the climate control, you don't have power, electricity, heat, uh, clean running water, all of that stuff is that there's an adaptation curve. When you're moving from an urban to a wilderness environment, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna to have to be broken in. It's gonna take a few days to get fully broken in. And it follows a pretty standard pattern. On the first day when I go out into the wilderness after having not done it for some time, and I work in an office job, I'm fully immersed in the grid when I am in the city. I'm as on grid as anybody else. So when I go into the wilderness now, I haven't done tree planting for about six or seven years, there is definitely an adaptation curve that happens. Now, on the first day, usually it's, it's okay. Usually the first day, uh, with the exception of maybe the first night, it's pretty easy because everything is fresh, everything is fully charged, you're ready to go, you got all your gear, all your gear is still relatively clean. Uh, but after the first night, that's when it gets a little rough out there in the wilderness. Maybe you have a rough sleep that first night. Maybe your air mattress wasn't situated right. Maybe you didn't lay down your tent in the right way, facing in the right direction. Maybe you realize that you forgot something essential. Whatever the case might be, usually after that first night, the reality of the situation kind of hits you. The second and third days, in my opinion, are probably the hardest. And when I was doing tree planting, a lot of the rookies they would crap out pretty early on in the game. Uh, you would know whether or not this was the job for you in the first few days of doing it because it's very hard work. When you're out there doing tree planting, it doesn't matter if it's raining sideways, if it's raining from the bottom up, if it's snowing, it goes from really cold to really hot. And whenever you're not at those temperature extremes, it's really buggy. And so you're either soaked in chemicals in order to prevent yourself from being eaten alive or you know you're just it's it's really hard land you're climbing over stuff it's just physically grueling work where you're carrying 50 pound bags over a forest which was clear cut more more often than not a lot of the slash and the blowdown was laid there to rest and you have to climb over that it's not just going out into the farmer's fields and planting rows of stuff like a lot of people think it is it was hard ass work and it's not like at the end of the day you can go back to a nice clean apartment or trailer or house whatever you know and, and get recharged for the next day no you're going and sleeping in a tent and if it rains all night you're going back to a wet tent and you wake up in the morning with all your shoes wet from the day before you got to get in those shoes and you got to get back to work and the only way to keep yourself warm is to work harder it's a freaking hard job and especially if you want to be really good at it it's even harder so you might be able to do it but to do it well is another story altogether. So what often happens um, after the first few days, like I'm saying, is a lot of people give up. 
Now, what happens around the third or fourth day is very important. And you need to understand this, that after about 72 hours, something happens. If you don't spend a lot of time in the wilderness, you don't know what I'm talking about. But if you do, you probably can relate to this. After around the third day, you get so dirty, you get so roughed up, so broken in uh, to the rotundness of nature. I'm going to call it the rotundness because when you're coming from the city, everything's in right angles. It's all symmetrical. It's all man-made. It's artificial. Nature is not like that. Nature is more fluid. It's more organic. It's more rotund. It's round. It's curved. And uh, when we come from the city, we're very straight. You know, we're very square, if you will. And that has to be broken down. You have to be broken down by uh, your environment to be a bit more circular in the way that you go about things because there's a certain fluidity of nature and animals in nature which you don't get in the domesticated world there's an unpredictable flow to things there's a rhythm to it but it's kind of more like jazz whereas you know the city is like techno music with a predictable beat you know red means stop green means go etc you don't have that in nature so you have to get broken into that not only physically but psychologically and emotionally as well so after around the third or fourth day something happens it's almost like you get so dirty you get so broken that you transcend this point and you find a routine with camp life which is probably the most important thing you know the first day you kind of just lay down you know the the foundations the second day you know, you kind of get caught up on things that you weren't really able to do the first day. And the third day, you're able to fine tune some things. You know, you're, you're starting to get into a rhythm with things, a schedule of how you're going to live. You know, you, you fetch your water at this time, you put your wood here, you know, you spend this amount of time to go and try to snare food or catch fish or whatever. You know how much firewood you're going to need for the night. You start to have a greater familiarity with your surroundings. So the stress of the unknowns reduce a little bit. And by day four, usually what happens is there's a bit of a maturation. There's an acceptance of things and you really start to get into a flow of things and you really start to become a part of the environment that you're in. You know, for some people, it might be a little bit longer. For some people, it might be a little bit shorter. But the reason why this is important is because on day three, at the peak, at the height of day three, that's probably when you're going to want to give up the most on whatever it is, your wilderness experience, your backcountry camping or whatever, that's when you're gonna feel so broken and rough. But what I'm trying to say is that the, the night is darkest before the dawn. I don't know if that's physically, scientifically true or whether it's just a nice way of saying that, you know, times are roughest before they really change to get better. And you're gonna reach a pinnacle of pain, like peak pain, peak stress when you move from that domestic environment to a wilderness environment around the 72 hour mark. And after that, if you can persevere through that, you're going to transcend a new level of comfort in that environment. So it's very important that you don't give up at that time, that you keep on moving and that you try to allow yourself to adapt to that environment. And remember, uh, nature is, is curved. You are thinking about things as a city dweller, very in a linear fashion. Our tendency is always to try to resist. In the, in the artificial world that we've created in the city, everything is subject to our manipulation and control. While trying to possess that same amount of control in nature is gonna to lead to a lot of frustration and it's gonna to lead to a lot of stress, anxiety, anger. You're gonna to wanna to give up. You're gonna exhaust your energy on those emotional outbursts. So capitulating to nature and understanding that you can't have control as much control as you had in the city where everything is meant to be controlled anything that's on pavement you know was put there by man and is to be used by man to to some sort of end whereas in nature it's a more symbiotic relationship where it's not just about you you are now a part of that ecosystem which you've immersed yourself in you are now a passenger in that train you're not the dominant factor within that environment and coming to terms with that is going to help you mature in your adaptation to that environment much quicker. So remember that when you're incredibly stressed and you feel 
that you just can't go on, even in a survival situation. I've never been in a true survival situation. I've been lost in the wilderness before, and that, that's a very uh, anxious, panic-inducing state, which can happen. It happened to me once uh, before dusk, and I was lucky enough to find the camp again. But uh, it also happened that I was left on a tree planting block uh, one time and I had to basically uh, hope that somebody would come back and find me because I was 30 miles from any form of civilization. The closest thing was our camp and then 100 miles from that was the town. So there was a psychological process that I had to go through there and an acceptance that, well, I might be here for a couple days because they're not going to realize I camp because everybody's breaking out for the day off. Anyways, to make a long story short, my luck must have been really good that day because there was uh, Aboriginal family who was driving to go get some firewood. This is way in the back country, so you would never expect to see anybody on these roads. So they were kind enough to give me a ride back in their old pickup truck uh, back to my camp if I would help them load some firewood. So obviously no questions asked. So I only had to stay out there for a couple hours, which is great. Anyways, the whole gist of this video, I really want to emphasize this point is that there's gonna come a time when you're being broken in and when you're, you're having the city and the urbanness broken out of you by nature, by the, by the climate, by the bugs, by the hard work, by the, the dirtiness, the filth, um, that's gonna have to be broken into you before you can truly find a comfort level in that environment. So let it happen sooner than later, especially with the bugs. Uh, one of the best cures for the bugs is just to start to take on the scent of the natural world and unfortunately that comes with the task of not being cloaked in any sort of synthetic chemicals or you know man-made uh, lotions soaps things of that nature and unfortunately it comes at the cost of perhaps being slightly less hygienic uh, although some people might have concerns about putting lots of chemicals on themselves in the first place and the long-term effects of that so you know there's a benefit there but for the most part, your, your hygiene is going to inevitably suffer a little bit. But in doing so, it's almost as if you start to smell more like the bush and the bugs leave you alone. I'm not sure if this is true or not, but the French voyageurs, uh, one of the things was just not bathing, you know, to ward off the mosquitoes because, you know, they smelled so bad that uh, nobody would want to, you know, eat them. So anyways, I hope you found this video useful today. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you can relate to this natural adaptation curve, what is your curve? Is it longer? Have you found it to be a shorter period of adaptation? Is there any way that you can expedite the process so you don't have to be in such a state of discomfort? And particularly, this is for people who are in an urban environment and may have to bug out to a wilderness scenario. I'm gonna do a video in the near future about bugging out with family and talk about how this adaptation happens as a group also because adding the group element and adding more people to the equation is definitely going to make this a more positive or negative experience depending on the group dynamics. So let me know in the comments section. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Support the channel by getting yourself a bug out roll through the link in the description. A very innovative way to organize your gear in the field. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out.